Would you dare bring extreme sports to the next level? Do a bungee jump with no strings attached? Don't worry, we won't let you hit the ground. We'll use science to catch you with some big magnets. How would it work? How many magnets would you need? And what are the chances that this could end up badly for you? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you did a wireless bungee jump with magnets. You've probably seen these thrill seekers jumping off cliffs and bridges, but their extreme doesn't come close to what we have in mind. Bungee jumping usually means that you're attached to an elastic rope. You're also secured by a harness and protected from colliding with the bungee cord by soft padding. What we propose is a bungee jump minus the rope, plus a couple of massive magnets. Could it work? Theoretically, this could be possible. Magnets have north and south poles, and they produce magnetic fields around them. The opposite poles are attracted to each other, and the similar poles produce a force of repulsion. What you'd need for a wireless bungee jump is a magnet strapped to your harness with its south pole facing downwards. You'd need another magnet on the ground with its south pole facing upwards. You'd also need to think hard before you agree to do this because I wouldn't recommend trying it at home. One thing I would recommend is to learn more about magnets, among other things, with our friends at Brilliant, the sponsor of this episode. I never thought doing math could be fun, but Brilliant totally changed my mind. If you've ever felt like taking a deep dive into the world of math fundamentals, but were afraid of long formulas and big numbers like me, well, you should check out Brilliant. I went to Brilliant to see what they had on magnets, and I ended up learning a whole lot more about axe throwing, gymnastics, and my fridge. You should try it too. Go to brilliant.org slash what if to sign up for free. Oh, and also the first 200 people who go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription for more interactive courses, daily challenges, and quizzes. Now that you're all geared up, you're ready to take the jump. The reason why bungee jumpers aren't splashed all over the ground after the jump is that the elastic rope slows them down to a stop and then pulls them back up, then down, then up, then down, then up, until all the energy from the jump is spent. With magnets, it's a little trickier. When you're in free fall, the gravitational force pulls you down and increases your speed by 9.8 meters per second every second that you fall. After three seconds of free fall, you'd reach a speed of almost 30 meters per second. Only, you wouldn't have a stretchy rope to soften your fall. Here's the thing about magnets. When they're apart from each other, their repulsive force is close to zero. But as they get closer together, the repulsive force increases very rapidly. As you jumped down, the magnets would stop you just a few centimeters from the ground. But because of the forces involved in stopping you so fast, you'd feel as if your body got smashed by a truck. I know, I promised you wouldn't get squashed into the ground, but I didn't say you wouldn't get crushed by the repulsive force between two magnets. If you're wondering if this could get any worse, well, it could. If you moved slightly out of line during your fall, you'd risk flipping together with the magnet attached to you. Now, instead of facing the opposite poles to each other, the magnets would be facing the same poles. And what do magnets do when they face similar poles? Yeah, they attract. Nothing will stop the magnets from touching each other, not even your body caught in between. The jump with magnets was a bad idea. Sorry about that. Looks like falling from an airplane could be safer than that, under the right conditions. But that's a story for another What If. <laughs>